Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. What's going on guys, this is Rob and we are picking back up with the King in Black, but this time we're focusing on a new carnage. Now, this story focuses largely on Spider Gwen or Ghost Spider or Gwenum or whatever you wanna call her. Technically it's Gwenum versus Carnage. Uh, but here's the thing, we haven't really done much about the character of Spider Gwen. And if you guys are interested, we can cover her. Um, it would likely come after the events of, of King in Black. Either that or I would have to find a day to dedicate it explicitly to her. Um, but she's one of these characters who was resoundingly popular when she first showed up because of the design of her spider suit like everybody cosplayed as spider gwen you guys probably remember that from back in like 2014 i think 2013 it was during the events of spider verse a lot of you guys were probably know exactly what i'm talking about um but she's been not hugely popular but pretty popular ever since right i mean among the various versions of spider-man she's the most popular outside of peter parker venom people like that but nonetheless this basically kind of comes off the heels of a few different things um for the character of spider gwen she's effectively exiled outside of her own universe right she's actually she, just, she spent a little while traveling the multiverse and that goes through a combination of things, the trial of Spider-Gwen, um, the events of Spider-Geddon. Uh, it comes after a few different things, but in effect, this she's in the main Marvel universe and she's been operating here for quite some time. The reality is that Marvel have been looking for a way to do that for a little while. They never really seem to fully flesh out her universe. They just kind of focus on the characters that we were familiar with from the main Marvel universe and just gave us like different depictions of those characters. So like Matt Murdock's a bad guy, different things like that. But, uh, but the overall gist here is that she's currently operating in the universe, but for the most part, isn't fully aware of everything that goes on here. For example, when this initially picks up, she's kind of talking about the idea of being in the city of New York with like Noel having essentially taken over. And she's not really familiar with everything regarding the whole history of like Venom, Eddie Brock, Flash Thompson, the nature of the symbiotes themselves, because how symbiotes function in her universe is a little bit different than how they function here. Uh, by and large, we can kind of assume there's similarities there because Noel is a multiversal being as opposed to a universal being. So he doesn't he's not just confined to the main Marvel universe he kind of operates throughout the entirety of the multiverse but the whole the whole thing here is that she's not really familiar with like Noel and she's not familiar with the idea that like the symbiotes exist because Noel created them the only real experience she has is really kind of what she knows here which is there was a guy named Venom uh Venom the symbiote was bonded to Peter Parker at one point and then it left him it joined Eddie Brock eventually Eddie Brock lost it it joined Flash Thompson now it's back with Eddie done that's really all she knows <laughs> that's really all she has in terms of familiarity she's not even really familiar with the power of the Venom symbiotes themselves. Now, something to understand here is that where she's kind of making her way through the alley and there's a guy screaming for help, one of the important distinctions is the Venom symbiote versus the Grindel symbiote. So a Grindel symbiote is kind of like an amped up version of a Venom symbiote. You know, if it was like a Venom symbiote times four, I'm just throwing out an arbitrary number here. We don't really get like a mathematical calculation for the, the Grindels versus the symbiotes in terms of strength and durability and all that kind of stuff. But uh, but basically it's an, it's an amped up version. And so where she goes in and she has dealt with the Venom symbiote before, where she goes in and tries to save this guy, ultimately it doesn't work because of the fact that, that her webbing isn't strong enough to pull this guy out, that the symbiote itself actually keeps this guy in place and then eventually transforms him. And so because she's kind of going up against a force that she's not really familiar with and so far is just able to overcome her webbing, which is exceedingly durable, it kind of throws her off. And with this guy having been transformed, all she can do is basically run. And that's one of the big distinctions between like Peter Parker and, and Gwen Stacy or Spider Gwen from the Earth 65 universe is that in that universe, Peter Peter Parker actually becomes a crazy guy, right? Like in her inner universe, Peter Parker is just like a crazy dude. But um, but in the in the main Marvel universe, Peter Parker is Spider-Man. He's a superhero that we all know and love. And so one of the big differences is that Spider-Gwen is not exactly like Peter Parker. And she wasn't meant to be, right? She wasn't meant to be this female clone of Peter. It wasn't supposed to be that way. Uh, Peter is for the most part a guy who just kind of keeps fighting and fighting and fighting. He does the honorable thing. He does whatever he has to. Spider-Gwen is a little more nuanced in the, sh in the sense that she's kind of like, okay, let's get while the getting's good. And she's not really a coward. She doesn't run away from everything, but she's more, more inclined to leave a scene than Peter Parker would be. You can call that a strength, a weakness, whatever you want to, but it's interesting. But these are all things that we would learn over the course of the Spider-Gwen comics if you guys are interested in seeing those. Again, I don't really know if you guys care. I think she's cool. I think her early stories were a little weak, but I think she got a lot better as time went on. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, with everything having, having happened, she basically runs back to where her roommates are, right? Kind of staying with her roommates because she's attending Empire State University. She's hanging out with her roommates and they kind of have this discussion like, hey, like, you know, 
know, you don't need to go out there by yourself uh, and do your thing, right? I mean, we could all do, you know, like like resource runs and stuff like that. Of course, uh, seemingly they don't really know that she's Spider Woman. I'm not going to swear to that. I'm not 100% caught up on her character, at least on the nuances in terms of things like this. But regardless, one of them kind of makes a statement that you never make when it comes to to any situation like this, right? How bad could it actually be, right? When she's talking about like how terrible it is out there, those dragons are everywhere. She doesn't really know where the Avengers are, but she assumes they'll save them because that's what the Avengers do, not knowing the Avengers have been conquered, right? And subdued by Null. Of course, when a person says, how bad could it possibly be? Or like, what's the worst that could happen? Then like that thing happens. And <laughs> <laughs> and one of these dragons comes blasting in, comes flying in, smashes through the apartment, and all hell breaks loose. Now, Spider Gwen does what she can, because remember, at this point, she's bonded with a symbiote, and so it allows her to sort of bring her suit up on a whim. It's one of the cool things that came out of the Gwenomized event, where Spider Gwen got the Venom symbiote. It was cool. I thought it was a really, really, really cool story. And that's what I'm referring to when I talk about how her writing and how her character got a lot better as time went on. But, uh, but ultimately, there's nothing she can do here, right? She tries to lead the symbiote away, but in the process, her friends are basically in engulfed by this symbiote and subdued and then again turn into forces of null with that having happened there's only so much she can do right she basically just kind of bails out she gets out before she's she's taken over herself and then she's just trying to make her way through the city and find some measure of a safe refuge and so what you end up getting is her basically you know latching on to one of the dragons which is actually really really cool her literally just flying a symbiote dragon around the city but like latches onto one of the dragons of course it crashes into a wall and then she ends up falling now when this happens she goes to grab her teleporter necklace now her teleporter necklace necklace is the only real means by which she can teleport back to her own dimension. There are other things, right? I mean, you know, we can use a little bit of common sense here when it comes to Marvel Comics. Doctor Strange could get her back. Somebody like Reed Richards could get her back with a portal or something along those lines. Like, there's a whole bunch of different ways she could go home. But for her own individual character storyline, her, her teleporter necklace is really the only way for her to teleport home. But she won't do it unless it's an absolute emergency. And this counts as one. So she's like, time to go! And like, she <laughs> she goes to hit her necklace, but when she does, the unexpected happens and the reason why is because what we end up getting what we end up doing is jumping back to the earth 65 universe the home universe of spider gwen and we basically pick up with mary jane watson now the reason why mary jane watson matters here is because in the early stories spider gwen was part of a band called the mary janes which as you can imagine was formed by mary jane watson and so because of that uh, it was a it was a cool little bit of a story here where you kind of got them uh, you know they were they were friends and they had a little bit of beef and then they were friends again then they beefed and they were friends again your typical girl stuff right you know girls are, girls do stuff like that right when girls hold grudges they hold grudges forever. And so because of that, it's, it, it was a, a little bit of off and on stuff. But Mary Jane Watson and, and really the Mary Janes are important because they were the first or really the, the, the most significant moment of, of Spider-Gwen revealing her identity to other people. It was a very significant moment because it was one of these things where her career as Spider-Gwen combined with trying to be part of a band ended up bumping up against each other. And her bandmates largely believed she was just flaky or she didn't really care or she had just kind of lost interest and was going through the paces and they felt disrespectful. They felt abandoned in a lot of ways. And so her kind of coming out and saying, okay, look, I'm not being flaky. I'm not abandoning you guys. It's just like, I'm a superhero, Spider-Gwen, ta-da! And like, that was <laughs> that was a, a cool little moment. But because of that, what it also did is it potentially made Mary Jane Watson a target. And the way in which this happens is with Earth-65's version of Miles Warren, also known as the Jackal. And the reason why she's a target here is because with Spider-Gwen kind of being a frequent, you know, frequently coming into conflict with the Jackal, the Jackal had this idea of basically grabbing these spiders Spiders, right, that that you know, or at least some kind of a some some kind of you know isotope based spiders that Spider Gwen had a that had a bond with at some point, and because of the fact that he was able to extract those a bit from her, he in turn wants to bond them to Mary Jane, and the belief is that if he does that, he can kind of bridge the gap, and at the very least, maybe transform her into his own servant or something along those lines. But when this happens, as soon as that takes place, you end up having you know Spider Gwen hitting her uh, hitting her teleportation device, and Mary Jane Watson is suddenly teleported to Spider Gwen instead of Spider Gwen teleported back to her own dimension and so it really is an effect because of this this kind of bond that's that uh spider gwen has with her spiders that in effect mary jane watson is kind of pulled out through those spiders right because that's the means by which mary jane watson can teleport and so she literally just flies out of mary jane watson right like some perverse version of giving birth and just kind of goes crashing down into the ground and as soon as that happens Noel picks up on it. Noel's like, what in the world is going on here? You know, it's 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 interesting because he's just kind of like, what are you? 
right? You're not from this universe, but you're not, you're not from me either, right? You exist, but at the same time, you're not a source of me. And he's like, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, I, I take everything that is symbiote related, right? Whether it's synthetic or not. And so ultimately he ends up subduing Mary Jane Watson. And when he does, she full on becomes his dutiful servant, right? And he basically, and, and at that point, she kind of rechristens herself in becoming Carnage. Now, it'd be very easy to look at this and say, this is stupid. If anything, I'm excited for this. I See, here's the, the biggest gripe I had with the Spider-Gwen comics. The single biggest gripe I had is they never did much to expand Spider-Gwen's own universe, right? I mean, they did a few things here and there, but it was a whole universe and she was super popular. They could have done a lot to expand it. And granted, you don't want to expand too much too fast because it feels like it's too much to take in and people get turned off by the sheer overwhelming amount of what's happening. But like over the course of the last six or seven years, they could have done more than they did, you know? And so, so it's kind of cool. You know, I'm, I'm digging the idea of like a, like the Earth 65 version of Mary Jane Watson becoming Carnage. It fits in perfectly with the, with the Spider, the, the Spider-Gwen mythos. So anyway, guys, uh, if you are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Core. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.